Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Investor Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Pitella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about the real cost of using data to purchase undervalued property. The actual cost, the price per, price per uh, unit, I should say, or in, included in that is, you know, the actual cost of not using it, trying mm. other ways and methodologies and, and the, the real cost Good of point. actually not using our experience, which is free. Right. But be, you know, before we get into that, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Okay. Matt asks, hey, everyone, I didn't see any threads on this topic, so I thought I'd start one. Someone offered to sell me a parcel of vacant commercial land. I love it. I usually stick to residential, but I was curious what differences commercial might pose. What due diligence steps exist for commercial that aren't there for residential? What's the sales market like compared to residential? Do you post it somewhere else like LoopNet? Yep. How do you gather comps? Thanks in advance. Sincerely, Matt. Great questions, Matt. Uh, we buy a commercial property probably once a month here. And the first thing I do is look, go onto the EPA's website, the Environmental Protection Agency, and make sure that the property is not logged in there. It's not part of a Superfund site. Okay. Uh, and more importantly, and I think this could over, gets overlooked about commercial property all the time, is what's going on in the immediate area of the property. I'll give you a very, very quick story. I did a commercial real estate deal a lot, a lot of years ago that it got terminated and didn't close. Broke my heart. Uh, actually, I was really young and needed the money. Didn't close because there was a former gas station three blocks away and it had a tank that was still in the ground and the lender said they wouldn't land on it based on that. Because so it's too close. Yeah. What could well, happen? Yeah, which is really silly. There's a lot of people get real heated in real estate about the EPA and how, uh, you know, they're a vigilante about right. it. So, but that's a time for a different debate. So that's the real difference. And then LoopNet is, if uh, it's a real piece of commercial property, LoopNet is the single place to buy and sell commercial land. Isn't... Uh, aren't mobile lots considered commercial? Well, that's a, another thing. Yeah, sometimes. No, mobile are considered considered mobile, but the thing with commercial property is that you can zone down. I love it. So go ahead, Jill. So depending on where it is, I usually get excited about it. So if it's vacant commercial land and it's way out somewhere that they thought they were going to do this town and it never really panned out, the beauty of commercial is you have a lot more options. And often you can use it for mobiles. You can, the, with the, the way properties go... It's, it's much, much easier to zone down than it is to zone up. What I mean by that is zoning down is for less uh, types of usage. Like one of the lowest types is residential. You can only put a house on there. That's it. That's all you can do. You can't even put a mobile on there. That's it. That's all you can do, you know, kind of thing. And then sometimes within residential, you'll have things that have to be site built. You, you have to pour a foundation. I mean, this is really interesting when you get into this. There's lots of types of residential that some you can put a cabin on, some you have to, yeah. you can put something with wheels on it, some you can't. Some, even though so you it's own like it, a, a park, yeah, or agriculture land, exactly. Some you uh, say you own it, you think it's mine, I can do whatever I want, or I can park an RV there for three years. Yeah. No, you can't. So you have to look exactly. So there's some different things like that, but so then it gets real specified, and that's what I mean by but you're down at that. I say down, but it says it could be up for somebody else. That somebody else loves it. They sees it as a positive. But for us, I want land that I could do more with because then it's even more value to me and I reach more people and there's more options. So when I get, you know, residential or excuse me, commercial way out there, I'm pretty darn excited because I'm like, wow. First thing I do is I look to see like what Jack said, you know, what's around there. Okay, great. It really is out there. It's nothing. Can they put an RV on it? Can they put uh, a mobile on it? Awesome, because that's how I'm going to market it. Because you could do, not only is it commercial, you could put a store on it, you could put an RV on it. Well, you, you can't walk in and do it. You need to apply for a zoning variance. True. But the whole, the deal is the zoning variance has a much, much better chance of happening. Right. You're going to zone down, not exactly. up. Exactly. That you have all these options to, to do pretty easily. You know, I always say, people ask me like what's the difference between land investing in land and investing in houses and i say investing in houses you almost to the dollar know what's going to happen but in land there's always that 
pie in the sky, home run, knock it out of the park, home run. And the, the ones that Joe and I have had involved commercial, buying commercial property. It's true. You know, you but you can buy commercial property for five or ten thousand dollars and sell it for three or four hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I w- don't expect that on your first deal or even your first year, but every year Joe and I do a deal like that. Sometimes things come along, you never know. Where you know, it com- the deal comes in, it, the offer comes in signed, and that's when I mean, Jill and I don't work in the same office. In fact, we work in different zip codes for to, to keep, keep our relationship together. Totally. And but I'll tell you, when those kinds of things come in, whoever gets it, me or her, we stop what we're doing and just you know Get we run to the bank. Yeah. So as far as posting it and everything, I I still roll it into the system. Use all your normal channels um, for posting property clearly state why it's different because that's a big deal you don't want someone to have to kind of dig to find there's there's somebody out there that's looking for this kind of property traditionally and by saying zone commercial i would put that right in the title by the way and make it jump out because that's awesome and then LoopNet is awesome what else were you going to say about that jack loop that's the end okay it's the best okay it's going to reach, you know, it's expensive, but it, it will reach the right people. And how do you suggest map for comps? You want me to use LoopNet comps or every comp or how do you every want Every other to do way it? that you use comps, you know. Just roll that in. Comp comparison values for land, they don't, they do not take zoning into, into uh, consideration. So you're going to see a piece of property that hit the system, especially if you use assessor comps like we do, the data type comps, you'll see what's going there. Right. There's no difference in, in the comps, but if you want it just a brush to see what it's worth, like a... Uh, 35,000 foot it'll be in LoopNet or Redfin awesome or I hope he bought com. this I do too I hope by now he bought it <laughs> me too I think I know which matter it is I do too <laughs> today's topic the real co- the real cost of using data to purchase undervalued property this is the meat of the show so one of the things that stops a lot of people from digesting this this way of purchasing real estate is the actual dollar cost. Let me give me an example. If you're getting into this or you're trying to change, if you're already in it and you're trying to change to you know, change the way that you're buying real estate and get a better yield and bit, just generally improve on what you're doing, you have a few choices and some of them cost money and some of them don't. Like driving for dollars, the dollar cost of it is free or it's the cost of gas. We don't you know, exactly know what the yield is going to be, and it's a little bit more like fishing, but the actual dollar cost is, is close to zero. Knocking on doors, close to zero. Bandit signs, very, very small amount of cost, $100, $200. All those different ways attract people because of the cost. It's, it's close to zero. Data, when you actually download it and get it into the mail, costs about $0.10 cents a line item. And then the mail itself costs, I don't know what, Jill, 50 cents, right? Mm-hmm. 58, 58.63, somewhere in there. So let's just use round numbers. To send out 3,000 letters to buy a house, which you're going to make $25,000 on, it's going to cost about 1500 bucks. That's the actual cost of using data and mail to purchase property. So the question is, are you willing to spend $1,500 to make twenty grand? Hmm, I got to think about that. <laughs> I mean, am I oversimplifying here? No. I don't think so either. No. Because you know what? The, at the end of the day, it is that simple. Why Why do we? Why is it so hard to understand? For land, here's the numbers on land. Same thing. For every property that you purchase, you have to send out about 300 mailers. Rural vacant land now. And probably info lots. This actually includes that. So you, buy, you send out 300 letters. cost you about 150 bucks to buy a property that you're going to double your money on. In the infill lot case, you're going to make at least 10 grand, maybe five to 10 grand. And the rural vacant property, you'll make same number, usually probably one to four or $5,000 net. Mm -hmm. These are the numbers that we've been experiencing. So yeah, am I oversimplifying this? Yeah, because you have to spend some money on education or you really need to do a lot of research and time to figure out, anybody can drop crap in the mail and nothing's going to happen. Right. If I send an offer out in downtown Chicago for $500 an acre, I'm going to get laughed at and screamed at and I'm waste a ton of money and upset a lot of people. Exactly. That's a, uh, an extreme example, but to the same token, you don't want to send you know, an offer out in a rural county in Arizona for $800 an acre at all. Mm-hmm. 
you'll i mean that's high so 800 800 to a thousand dollars an acre in arizona you're gonna everybody's gonna sign it and send it back and you're gonna find out that you can't sell it you wasted your time so that's the pendulum swung back there from the chicago example in pricing but so you want to do it you want to do it right Mm -hmm. so you're gonna spend some money on the education that's my point but my big picture point is what's the cost of not doing it this fifteen hundred dollar mark, or this spending this money on education, stops a tremendous amount of Isn't people that funny? from doing this. They just don't have the money, and they're concerned that they're going to do it wrong. Right. So you need that confidence, or you need to believe in it. That's why we set up LandInvestors.com to go go get your confidence there for free. Well, you know what? Some people have to go through the motions, do it wrong, and then realize it. I understand that. This reminds me of one of our members. This was like a year and a half ago. I remember talking to this guy, and he's like. I did it all wrong. And I'm like, what? And he's like, well, here's what I did. I thought I was saving money. I went to the county directly. I asked for, I, I, and I gave him the whole list of things that I wanted. It took uh, two weeks. I got a DVD and it cost me 200 bucks or something like that. It wasn't free. The assessor's database is what you mean. Exactly. And, and number, so number one, he goes, and I'm not even sure I got everything I wanted. That was right. Correct. So I'm like, okay, got it. Keep going. He goes, then I turned around, I uploaded that DVD into my system. I sent it to a, a VA overseas and it took them six weeks um, to put all of this stuff into the columns that I wanted and put it the way that I wanted and to sort and six come, weeks like or it was like maybe the whole thing was six weeks but it took a couple more weeks after that oh point my gosh. seriously for them to put it all in there and what was interesting That's though he goes grow old right but he's like and we were talking about it. I'm like, how do you know they were doing it right with the data? He goes, I don't. He's like and, and he was even nicely saying, I'm still learning, Jill. He's like, I'm not even sure, you know, what I'm telling them is the right thing, you know, kind of, and and putting it this way. He was, you know, and I'm like, oh no. And so anyway, maybe that was at the, at the end of the end of the whole thing, he lost six weeks. It was, you know, a couple hundred bucks and he's not even sure that this data at the very bitter end that he's going to do a mail merge and do something with is what is the right stuff. And he, and I'm like, oh no. And he goes, yep. I'm done. But for some reason, well, here's my point. I, we're trying to, it, it doesn't have to be that long. It doesn't have to cost that much. You think you're saving money by doing those things, That's but in the end, you're here. not. The six weeks and, and $500 you spend to get that to that point, you could have done in one weekend and a couple hundred bucks, right. you know, just pulling yourself. Yep. That's it. Or not trying. What's the cost of not trying? Well, and here's a, well, here's part of it too. Let me back up. It's it's simple, but it's it's important. Every county is going to hand you their data in a different format. So once so you're going to turn around and do this again, two counties over. Guess what? You start from scratch, and they might cost more. It might cost less. But now your VA, by the way, there's another learning curve. Now that now all this data that's just been dumped on your lap of you, if you've not looked at county data and looked at this, this this garbly gook uh, batch of numbers and stuff that they send you, sometimes you can't even tell. Wait, is that the assessed amount? Is that the tax column? Wait, what is this? You don't even know yeah. to understand what the columns are sometimes to work with the data is a is a nightmare. And so here's why we we. We've learned, and back in the day, we didn't. Ha- that was that was the only way that you had it. But now there's things like, huh, RealQuest Pro, where you know what? Goodness, every county is downloaded the same way. Oh my gosh, I can do m- mailers with more than one county at the same time. Wow, who knew? It all dumps into my spreadsheet the same way. So not even on the front end, but you know, going back and looking at the data later on and going back and finding more information about a property. I mean, it's all, it's so much easier to work with and people, I don't think take that into consideration, but for me, it's a huge time saver. And if I'm saving time, I'm saving money. Yeah. I mean, well said, and I'll add to that. Anybody who's tracking down the county to get data from them to do what we do is leaps and bounds ahead of people that don't understand the data piece at all true. and the cost of data. So it's true. why not take it to I the next to, level? I haven't talked to anybody recently who's had a, a county, because I think we're sending the message successfully that pulling county data to do what we do, it, it, it'll work. It can work and does work. That's the root of the data anyway that we use. It's just, you have to be an expert in uh, reconstruction, data mm-hmm. reconstruction. 
And so, but anybody who understands that, they're going to do fine. Right. They're going to do it a few times and they're going to say, oh, I got to find well, that's like somebody this person. like us. At least this person knew what was, what was going on and then they realized, okay, there's got to be a better way. I can't believe this took me this long. The real cost in all of this is not buying into the fact that it works anyway. That's true. Because then you'll just say, you know, for f- I'd rather spend fifteen hundred dollars on something else on it's bandit like, signs. It's like, and then you never, and then you fail for sure. So the f- you, then you're going to fail. Here's my example. You're going to fail driving for dollars. You're going to fail at all of these other other ways. You might get lucky the first couple of times, but it won't be consistent like mailing. You know, what it's like for me. It's like, say I want to buy um, a new couch. I know I can look online, but I'm not going to do that. No, 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 no. I want to drive store by store. On 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 Saturday and Sunday, and I'm going to do it. My I'm not going to do it that way. Why use the Why use the internet to help and look and see what's on sale? No way. No, I'm going to go all over the town, all day Saturday, all oh day Sunday. Gosh. I'm a, I'm going to take my own pictures. I'm going to write down. I'm going to measure it myself. You know what I mean? It's, that's it's, insane. It's kind of like that, but really seriously, is. that's really how I feel like it is. Yeah. It's like, are you really going to, you know, go store to store to store and then, and then, oh, and then come home and lay them all out on the kitchen table and line them all up and then pick the one? No, you're not. You're going to go insane. on the internet. You're going to sort for what you want. Yeah. You're at least know going in that that store is having a sale. Let's not be silly here, you know, or whatever. Or at least they have what you, you're you looking for and it and it, it's what you want to buy and it's in the price range you're willing to spend. I feel like it's the same thing. You know, if you're a contractor or a carpenter or an engineer, you use the mathematical concepts to get what you, you know, you measure twice, cut once, and you use, if you're an engineer specifically, use the concepts you've learned and equations to do what you're going to accomplish. You don't just slap a bunch of stuff together and, and then see if it works. There's pre- ways to do it that have been predetermined to, to be successful, right angles to support, you know, from an architecture standpoint, there's angles that only work, a mm-hmm. range of angles with weight, and there's equations for everything. Mm-hmm. It's the same way here. There are equations on how to do this with very predictable outcomes. So the cost of not using data and not absorbing and realizing these concepts, are they equal failure. It's just, for me, a lot of it's time. I it's data week, so, so much time. Talk about this stuff. You know, that's wasted doing things the hard way and the long way. Yeah. You know? That's it. And and picking up the phone, calling people to check things, that's old. Yeah, the phone. We have a show coming up next week about how inefficient. If you were driving any traffic to a telephone number, in the end, you were not. You have made yourself unscalable. Right. And we have a very, very successful member who is, this is not my concept. He's really reached out to us, like, asking for help. Because all he does is he's on the phone all day. Well, you've done it again. You spent another, I don't know, 18 minutes or so listening to the Land Investor Show. Join us tomorrow for another episode where we talk about the Land Academy data that we use versus the House Academy data. I can't wait. Jill can. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Another exciting episode. (laughs) (laughs) And we answer your questions. Should you have one, post it on our online community at landinvestors.com. Go there. It's free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. So I'm, I'm loving this data week. Thing. I know you are. You know, I'm probably, I'm catching myself being a little monotone here, but geez, you know, I have all this stuff stored up in my, in my soul. I know that. It needs to get, needs to get uh, shared. So is this, is this, this is Jack has to get it out week. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Data week, AKA Jack just really needs to vent. I get it. It's tomorrow's Friday. So we need to. Have some fun a little bit. All right. Talk about Land Academy and the success of it all. I am excited. That's going to be good. Hey, share the fun by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you're listening. And while you're at it, please rate us there. We, we are, are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.